Hello everyone, today I am going to tell you 2020 NR guideline. As we know, these guidelines updated every 5 years. So I have already uploaded the 2015 guideline on this YouTube channel. Today I am going to tell you 2020 guidelines for the NR. Today I am going to cover the first two objectives principles of resuscitation and what are the changes in newborn physiology occur at the time of birth. Other part of the resuscitation I will cover in next video. So as we know 90% of the newborn make the smooth transition from intrauterine to extrauterine life. So they do not need any kind of assistance. Only routine newborn care should be given to all the newborns. Only 10% newborn need some assistance. Some initial steps of resuscitation will be required. Only 1% require the extensive resuscitation. Means we also have to give the bag and mask ventilation or intubation or cardiac compression very rarely. We should always prepare to resuscitate because even the full term without any risk factor may require the resuscitation. What is the basic difference between adult and neonatal resuscitation? As we know in adult main cause of compromise is circulation. So the sequence of resuscitation in adult is CAB while in newborn they are compromised because of breathing. So the sequence will remain ABC. First airway, then breathing, then circulation. This pyramid is showing the steps of resuscitation. A, B, C, D. So A step in which the initial steps of resuscitation, keeping the baby under armor, clearing the airway and positioning the baby and drying and stimulating. So these steps are almost always needed. Now the step B in which we have to provide the oxygen if required then begin mass and intubation. So these steps needed less frequently. Then the C and the D chest compression C and drugs or medication D step really needed. Now what are the changes in newborn physiology occur? We know before birth, fetus totally depend on placental circulation. So all the oxygen supply by the placental membrane occur. During the fetal time, no role of lungs for the oxygenation. So the alveoli are fluid filled and constricted pulmonary vessels are there, which will lead to the low PO2 in the fetal blood. And because of low PO2, these arterioles remain constricted. And because of constricted pulmonary vessels, pulmonary vascular resistance increases. And ultimately shunting of the blood from the pulmonary artery to the ductus arteriosus then to the aorta occur. So in this image also you can see the circulation from the pulmonary artery to the aorta occur via the ductus arteriosus. What happen after birth? After birth when the baby cries in this image you can see initially fetal alveoli are filled with the fluid. When the baby take the first breath when the baby cry then the air went into the alveoli and subsequent breath replaced the, all the fluid in the alveoli and alveoli filled with the air then and once it is filled with air PO2 will be increased so the pulmonary vessels which were constricted before birth now dilated so dilated pulmonary vessels after birth occur so it will relax the pulmonary arterioles and ultimately pulmonary vascular resistance will be decreased. So once the pulmonary vascular resistance will be decreased flow to the aorta from the ductus arteriosus also stop. 
because the pressure in pulmonary vessels has decreased now the flow will not be from pulmonary vessels to the aorta and umbilical arteries also constrict once you put the umbilical cord clamp closer of the umbilical artery and vein occur and increase systemic vascular resistance occur so the pressure in aorta significantly increase and pressure in pulmonary decrease so decrease pvr and increase svr lead to the functional closure of the ductus arteriosus functional closure occur within 72 hours of the life it will lead to the increased blood flow into the lung field and oxygenation will be improved and supply to the body through the aorta occur what can go wrong means why the 1% newborn require the resuscitation example if the uterine and placental blood flow compromise is there because of abrupt placenta or mother is having the gestational hypertension then the deceleration of fetal heart rate will occur this is the first clinical sign that baby is compromised and steps of resuscitation will be required if after birth baby is not crying immediately that means breathing is not started and it will lead to the inadequate ventilation and baby will require the resuscitation in utero hypoxia will lead to the meconium pass and meconium stent liquor will be there and it will block the airway so patient can develop the meconium aspiration syndrome if mother is having abrupt show placenta or placenta previa then chances of fetal blood loss will be there so at the time of birth baby will have the hypotension fetal hypoxia or fetal ischemia due to any reason will lead to the poor cardiac contractility and fetal bradycardia so baby will be in apnea and in bradycardia and it will lead to the systemic hypotension pulmonary arteries remain constricted if the breathing will not started immediately it will lead to the primary pulmonary hypertension so what are the changes due to oxygen deprivation initially baby will have the tachypnea rapid breathing will be there during this time heart rate and blood pressure will remain normal after the tachypnea there will be primary apnea and during the primary apnea heart rate will decrease so the baby will have the bradycardia but bp will be maintained and after primary apnea gasping respiration occur and with gasping respiration bradycardia will be persistent and still the bp will remain normal once the baby will go into secondary apnea heart rate and bp both will fall so baby will have the bradycardia and also the hypotension so whenever heart rate is less than 100 that means baby is having either primary apnea or gasping once the heart rate is less than 60 that means baby is having secondary apnea with hypotension so whenever baby is not breathing immediately after birth after the initial step you should consider that baby is in secondary apnea and urgent positive pressure ventilation should be started so what will be the consequences of interrupted transition low muscle tone respiratory depression apnea gasping take apnea initially then bradycardia hypotension and central cyanosis will develop so initially baby will have the take apnea then primary apnea develop after stimulation if respiration is not started you should consider that baby is in secondary apnea effective positive pressure ventilation should be given if myocardium is depressed bradycardia is there heart rate is less than 60 chest compression and if after chest compression also no improvement then medication adrenaline will be required so this is the algorithm of nr 2020 guideline in next video i will tell you all the steps how to perform with video Thank you so much.